So shall we do the, uh, shall we build the character first and then sort of just walk people through it or do we show them how we're making the character? Uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll just make it a character and explain the steps as we go, basically. So hi, uh, I think we uh, we started recording right now. So uh, hi everyone, uh, well, welcome to the sequel of the bloody handed name of bronze uh, role playing game. Uh, I'm joined here uh, tonight with uh, Richard Fatsi, uh, who's a colleague of mine, a fellow teacher of humanities and social psych. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So today we're going to keep playing in the same world as in the first uh, tutorial video, but now we're going to feature the name dealer companion. So you can explore and see uh, the other side of the game, basically. So uh, what do you recall about name dealers, Richard? Well, I know that um, it kind of points at like the trickster or wizard or shaman archetype compared to sort of like our warrior hero you know, it's it's always it's always you know Arthur and Merlin. It's always you know Aragorn and uh, Aragorn and and Gandalf, right? It's always yep. Thor, and Loki. So like this is that other sort of um, other sort of character that that relies on their wits or their charm or their connection to nature. They they they're gonna uh, play with the spirits. They're gonna strike deals with named entities, right? I know that this is sort of yep. a big thing that everything. You know, the world is imbued with spirit, but also there are big spiritual entities of all kinds that represent all kinds of different aspects of human life symbolically, right? But these are real, metaphysically real things in the in the fictional world that, yep. we're, that we're talking about. And so the name dealer kind of navigates um, a little bit more indirectly in the world than the, than the hero that goes right at a thing, you know, goes right at a problem yep. or, you know, that overcomes challenges by going right at it directly. The name dealer kind of takes it from the side, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, name dealer's ability comes from the fact that he can uh, tap into this, the language of names, yeah. uh, which is basically the sound produced by uh, the uh, vault of heaven and the waters of the underworld having sex together, basically. Uh, in an English style. Uh, so name dealers, they just know that old secret language of names. So when they speak to anything that has a name, um, in that language, that thing, that named one, must answer them, must reply to them. And then when you, when they want to strike a bargain, uh, they exchange names. But of course, name dealers, they know better than to give their real names because they know that the true name has some power behind it, right? You right, could, right. They would so be forced to deal in good faith. The way that a lot of mythology talks about like demons having a true name, if you want to yeah. have power over them, then you speak yeah. their true name or, or whatever. Um, but if they've got your true name too, then you enter sort of in a pact with them. They've got you by yep. the hooks, and then now you're in a <laughs> now you're in a little more dangerous relationship of codependence or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So it means that uh, this is why we see, you see so many lines be, be, uh, beside uh, "I'm known as," right? That you've got all these lines to write your uh, your uh, AKA. Uh, uh, AKA. See? Yep. Oh, <laughs> yep. God. So you're this gonna have the... a real name, but then when we play the game, you can always draw from the well of names to give a, a new fake ID, if you wish. Or you can just run with this the same fake ID, and when it, it becomes a bit too hot, right, you just drop it. I feel like I'm prepared for this. Like my my original <laughs> and still and still playing 13th, no, 14th level now uh, Warlock in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons is in a pact with an otherworldly entity, but he's always kind of making deals with other things, yep. and he does have a long list of aliases and false identities. <laughs> So prepared. well, yeah, this is something like this. So um, so that's where we'll start. Actually, I think that uh, we should uh, we should find you a name first. Yeah, let's draw from the. Or I should tell it that I am um, that I will be the. Oh, I need the name first, and then yeah. I tell that I will yeah. be the the, yeah. the pack dealer, or not the pack dealer, the name dealer. <laughs> yeah, good. All right, let us draw from the well of names. Do I need to capitalize this? No, it's cool. Boom, let's do it. Hammond mesh. Hammond mesh. Hammond mesh. Can you pronounce it with a straight face? Hammond mesh. I'm Hammond really mesh, trying sure. hard. I'm really trying hard to pronounce it with a straight face. I'm gonna, mesh, give yeah. more, I'm gonna give it one yeah. more try. Draw from the will of names. <laughs> 
Marinier. Marinier. Sure. Yep. Let's do it. I am Marinier. I'm going to write it real small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, I'll put it in this one. This one looks like it's going to be a bit better. I am Marinier. That's it. Yeah. Marinier. Yeah, we can barely read it right now. I'll just uh I'll just zoom in a bit. Okay. Uh yeah, slightly better. Let's try this now. Good. Okay. So uh like at the right of unknown as you see your two mortal mortal lives of jet. Uh this is what you get as a as a name leader, as any other character. Okay. But here they're both related with your breath. The breath of life and then your last breath. So when you lose your last breath, well, you're dying. Uh, but in the case of the name leader, as long as you've got destiny points stored, you can still take some actions as you're dying. Like okay. your last will, so kind of your actions is almost a ghost or a spirit itself. Okay. So yeah, now we can type I portray Marinier. Marinier, the name, the name dealer. dealer. Yep. All right. Behold. Oh, good. Good. So now Bash will interpret or dice roll based on the rules of the name dealer only. So that will simplify stuff. Um, now we need to figure out uh, a new name, a, a name that aids that aids you basically. Yeah, they're, they'll lend you your immortal dice of gold. The name dealer compared to the faded hero, it will accrue more of these dice of gold uh, because they will strike the old other. Oh, Febid. Feb is good. Febid. Yeah. Yep. Feb is awesome. So, so who, what is Febid? Febid is um, uh, Febid is uh, a flying fish. Um, oh, nice! He's a flying fish. He's a he's a giant flying fish that uh, that lives um, on the borders between the sea and the sky. Oh, okay, cool. So, Fibid the flying fish. Type it uh, under the uh, who names you name? Yeah. Who and me? Okay, right here. So, Fibid the flying fish. Good. Okay, so we'll figure out who they are uh, after we find out who you're fleeing from and why you're fleeing them. Because then we'll figure out how the flying fish aided you uh, yep. fleeing your pursuer. So, yep, and a new name. Oh, you're fleeing from Namumnu. I like Namumnu. it. Namumnu. Yeah, I like I that. I like it. Namumnu. And you know what? I think Namumnu works, you know, last time with my with my fated hero. He was devoted to the Sky Father, and there were some kind of rumblings about like uh you know gods associated with the earth and sort of yep. like my enemies, my my you know, my antagonists that I was dealing with seemed to be allied with them somehow. Uh I think that might be Namumnu to like tie this into to the other story. Yeah, sure. You know, like Namumnu is like some sort of Earth entity, some sort of like god of the, the the ground and the underworld, and other things like whatever whatever else fits with that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I flee Namumnu, the Ketonic god, basically. Yeah, the uh, like uh, that's a that's like a god of the underworld, right? Of like yeah. of caves and the underplace. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So Namumnu, yeah, Ketonic. Yeah, even the the sound of the name is very it, like inward. Under the ground, right? it's true. It's guttural. Yeah, Namumnu. And uh, why you flee Namumnu now? Because mm, so, what does that god? What does that uh, earthly entity wants in the first place? What is its desire? Mm. Uh, because because I because I saved 
a fish that was stuck in an underground pond. And that fish was Namumnu's favorite. Oh. It was Namumnu's favorite fish. And I found it in a pond, sort of, I w it was whispered to me by Febid the flying fish that, 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 that her companion, right? That her companion, I think this other fish is gonna need a name eventually, was in a cave, in a pool in a cave underground, held captive uh, by, by Namumnu, who kept her as a pet. Oh and, my God, that's and awful. I had to okay, go so, and get her and bring her back to the sea. So I brought yeah. her back to the sea, and then Mumnu is not having it. That needs the name now. Sure. Yeah. So this other fish. All right. Um, draw from the well of names. Labba, uh, labpar. Labpar. Sure. Okay. Because. Because. I freed. Lab par the golden companion of Thebid. Yeah. <laughs> From Namumnu. I'll just keep going on the next line here. From Namumnu's cave pool. Cool. It's enough for so, us to know. Great. So Namum, so Namum Nu is angry and mad at you. You freed uh, his pet fish, and of course, right? He wants to. He wants you to bring it back, obviously, uh, and just to exact some vengeance on yeah. you, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, well, okay. Uh, so somehow, Febid the flying fish, he helped you escape Namumnu, the Ketonic god, right? So uh, now we need to describe uh, Febid as a named one. So you've got these six qualities: old, big, mighty, on the, on the top line, and the bottom line has uh, beautiful, known to all, and inscribed. So uh, is it like an old entity, Febid? Oh yeah, old. And beautiful and big. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a big fish if you ride it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So old, beautiful, and big. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's it. Yeah, right. It's not known to all. It's not mighty, or no, it doesn't no, have any like kind of, sort of. Yeah. It's not like some sort of mighty over god, or even some sort of like a. It's not even really like a like a god. It's just sort of like a mythical creature you know it's just like a mythical creature yeah it's, it's a damn big flying fish yeah it's a damn big flying fish that can talk and that has a boyfriend that was stuck in a cave pool and i wanted me to take it out <laughs> yeah it works fine so what do they demand now of you oh no i need to figure it out yeah what do they demand now oh um Uh, what do you demand now? Um, mm. okay, now it demands that you bring back, uh, yeah, it demands that you bring back another friend from the uh, waters of the underworld. So we need another name now. Dalhaha, oh, I like it. <laughs> okay, fine. Dalhaha. Dalhaha, Dalhaha. All right, bring Dalhaha back from the waters of the underworld. So it wants you to rescue a, de a dead fish now. A dead fish? Yeah. Okay. So deeper down in the realms of the, you know, in the realm. Okay, you were able to do this in a regular, in a regular cave. <laughs> Now we're gonna send you for real into the under, the underworld, the real, real underworld. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's the that's the deal that you struck with Febid, so that now it would lend you its immortal dice of gold, like for for long term, basically. Okay. And what did he promise in return? That you get to answer it. Um, he's gonna teach me to fly 
and to hold my breath. Oh. To fly as a flying fish and to swim as a yeah, fish. To, to teach you the ways of the flying fish. Yeah. Yeah. That's That nice. sounds good, right? Let's yep. explore all over all kinds of crazy places. Yep. That's good. That's very good. Sign me up. Sign it. Three seasons and a movie. <laughs> okay, so that's what they promised. Good. Learn to fly and breathe in the, breathe underwater. Okay. Great. This. Okay, that's awesome. So basically, uh, we're we're done uh, creating your name theater. So one thing that is important to notice here is that the the thing that the name one demands it needs to be someone else than a player of the companion that decides this, right? Because mm -hmm. Somebody else needs to know the will of that name. So I know the will of that name. I know the will of Febit, right? Because it's the name one. So he wants Dalhaha back from the waters of the underworld. That's, that's his will, basically. The rest is something that you can leave the uh, companion player to figure out for themselves because you want them to kind of create and flesh out their own character so that they have a, a take and a spin on the story, basically, to give. So uh, good. So I think we're ready to, uh, to start playing itself. So we're going to... Uh, Show our faces back. Yep, it's good. Oh, let's see our faces here. Okay, good. Uh, so now uh, to start playing, I need to ask a few questions so that we can frame where uh, our story starts here. So let me just. Okay. And uh, just for fun, what is what? Uh, okay, so you want to learn to fly and breathe underwater? Good. Okay. I'm supposed to ask you what your character wants because, no, like it's the mystery of your heart. So it's we'll behind the it veil and it's behind yeah. the. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, no. Okay. So, ask question of the companions. Uh, so, first question I need to ask you is uh, well, where are you, Marinier? Marinier, am I able to say, like, it's like, where, where am I? Who am I with? What do I look like? What am I doing? Yeah. That's, that's what we're doing right now. I'm, so, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to answer all of those things, okay? I am I am looking up from a map that some sketchy person has given me which is supposed to lead me to an entrance towards the river Styx so that I can okay. go to the underworld. I'm by myself. Marinier is wearing uh, a vest and shorts. He's slim. He's got a uh, he's got a long braid again, kind of like the other guy did in yep, in my okay. other story. Except he's got like long green hair tied oh, back okay. in a braid, and uh, he's looking up, very disappointed by himself, to realize that the that the map has led him right back to the entry to the cave with the pool where he took the first fish from. Oh my god, this is so <laughs> good. OK. And uh, what you're doing exactly. So yeah, you're looking. You're looking what he's doing is he's looking yeah. for he's looking for the for the place and he realizes he's arrived here and he's kind of disappointed and dejected and confused. Like he's dubious about the whole situation here. OK, so you recognize the uh, the well, the dwell, the dwelling place of Namumnu and uh, you um, you still hear the uh, the rumbling basically in the cave uh, of when he uh, when he walks and you, you can hear uh, he is pacing up and down the cave, still mad that uh, uh, that part, right? Yeah. So he's still mad for that last part uh, got, uh, well, stolen, according to him, of course. Mm -hmm. So you hear the rumbling. Oh, that thief, that thief. Oh, which name did you give him? Did you give him a name? Me? Yeah, when you met him. Oh, the name that I made up for him, my fake yeah. name. Yep. Oh, did I even, did he even see me? I guess so, yeah, because he hates me. All right, so yep. draw... From the well of names, Dalpam. 
That was, oh, that's cute. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. That one's good. Okay. So you, you gave that name to uh to Namumu. So he, he's he's pacing up and down the cave, like just roar that album. If I can catch him, I will eat him now. I'm just constantly rumbling here, and it makes the whole place kind of shake. The entry is always kind of shaking a bit, like uh, the vibration, or or like you can feel them in, in your chest. Dalpham shakes his head. Is this I got a bad feeling about this? <laughs> <laughs> he looks around mm -hmm. and spots some things left behind from the camp that he had set up last time he was here. <laughs> that he had to flee so fast that he left some stuff behind. And there's not much left, but there is a dirty old blanket. <laughs> so he picks up the dirty old blanket and he pulls it over. <laughs> He pulls it over his head and hunches over. He grabs a decent sturdy stick. And he starts to take on like the, the, the sort of like the, uh, the, the gait of, of, of a haggard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, sure. Um, so, and uh, what next? You you make your way towards the entry of the cave, and he's, so yeah. Oh, he 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 catches his he he catches a glimpse of himself in the reflection of a little stream that leads down into the cave, and he says, "Whew! I don't know if this is gonna work." <laughs> okay, good. And he so starts to he starts to like hobble. With the, you know, with like the the, the hood over his head, <laughs> hobbling towards the cave, towards the cave, leaning on the cane that he's fashioned for himself. You um, as you go down the cave, um, it's as if the uh, the waves of the cave have shifted since the last time you came there. Uh, it's like maybe, well, you don't know exactly why, but. Um, oh, you, you notice that um, when, um, yeah, when you hear a stomping on the ground from the Mumnu, you, you can see that the, uh, the caves in, in the mountain kind of restructure a bit, the, like they, they, they move and they shake a bit, like he, uh, his, uh, his anger is basically reshaping the, the, the caves. There and it's becoming a bit more labyrinthine, right? As uh, as he goes into his, his uh, ramblings. Okay. Um, Dalpum listens carefully to where the rumbling and the stomping seems to be coming from, and when he gets some impression real or not, whatever it is, accurate or not, when he gets some impression, he's got a feeling that is coming from one side, he waits and watches sort of the caves opening and shifting and waits for like a new sort of tunnel entry entry to open up in the other direction. Okay, good. You, um, so it, it, it shifts, you, you jump in, the, in that direction and when you move there, you, uh, you're kind of welcomed by bats that are flying like crazy in all kinds of directions. Like they're being, uh, they're very agitated. Since like this, this old shifting of the caves is quite disturbing, right? They don't know where to uh, to land, basically, because the um, like the ground and the, the um, like the ceiling, they kind of uh, they're not stable, right? They always reshape themselves. Huddled over and hunched over, he reacts as a an old woman might in a movie, covering his hair and whipping around <laughs> this little stick. Stay out of my hair! Shabtunish has no need for bats in her hair. That's your new name. I like it. The old crone. I like it. Oh my god. <laughs> That's good. So hang on, Maradir is my true name. 
Dalpum the thief. Yep. I'm just giving myself little epithets <laughs> on which name goes with which identity. Yeah, you want to. Okay, you don't want to get all tangled up in your life. Name to the wrong situation here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, yeah, draw me a, a name, please. Another name. Yeah. Oh no, not a bat. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what do I expect? You know, Meshesh. Oh, I like it. So, <laughs> something like this, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's a rather huge bat, but like I don't know, maybe not very bigger than a, than a cat, like a, a like good sized cat, basically. Like a real life vampire bat. Yeah. Like a, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically. So it's nothing, nothing supernaturally huge, mm -hmm. but um, it's it is uh, going round and round and round and round over your head. And uh, it says, uh, it addresses you, right? Uh, uh, what's your name or crown? Shab? Shabtulish. Shabtulish, okay. So it says, Shabtulish, Shabtulish, uh, please find a way out for us, a new cave. A new cave? Yep. Do you want to go upward and outward or deeper? I'm going deeper. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, yep, they might be. Uh, they might be tempted to follow you deeper. Uh, now we're going to uh, roll for uh, because you're offering them with a desire. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Yep. Cool. 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 All right. So two mortal dice, dice of jet. Yeah. Right? Sorry. You roll two jet and three gold. Three gold. So roll. Two jet, three gold. Oh, no yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. What well, you need okay. the space, yeah. All two. Is there like a, a? Do I have to do a bang first or a no, slash? No, no, no bang. But you need a space between the two and the jet. Okay. Two jet, three gold. Okay. Ready to go. One strike on the jet. One strike on the gold. Succeeded. She took a good. Okay, so let's scroll down. I'll zoom in a bit so we can have a, a better look at what are your actions here. Good. This is the this is the the real first time that I'm looking at the consequences that I could choose from. I have no idea. Where this is going. <laughs> All right, let's look. This is going to be good. Yeah. So okay, so you did offer them what they desire, right? Yeah. So okay. they agree to do as you ask in exchange. So they could do so, they could do something for you right here. Um. Uh, you, you could you could kind of strike a deal with them and bargain with them to get something that you want out of them. Gotcha. Um, they make no further demand before accepting your disagreement. And oh uh, yeah, so of course we should have kind of made you peek out your, your deal before, but like we'll see what happens here. Okay. Uh, so second consequence is they make no further demand before accepting disagreement. And uh, the last one is this, their agreement endures. The last one is what you pick if you want them to be on your character sheet and provide you continuing aid, right? To gain immortal that dice of gold for a longer time. Okay. But, so I've got yeah. I've got two of these that I get to choose. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll take the first one. They agree to do as I ask in exchange. Um, and what I'd like them to do is I'd like them to accompany me down toward the the river Styx. Um, in exchange for, I will help them back out afterwards and and find them a uh, you know and find them a cave, a more suitable cave. Um, and I'd like their agreement endures. And so, like, what else do they want? Oh, nice. Um... Um, what could okay? Um, so Meshesh is there and it says, Oh, crone, just bring us the flesh of one of the underground spiders and flies around like this, and he, he emits some these kind of shrieking sounds that bats can like this. Quite mm -hmm. like I cannot do it. Yep. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. So what he wants is the flesh of uh, 
of one of the underground spiders. So he wants that first before he'll embark with me on this uh, on this descent. Yep. Or he, because okay. it's before accepting this agreement. Okay. All right. So he's in. Yeah, he's into it, but he wants something. Okay. Great. Yep. So uh, do I get to add him to my sheet yet, yep. or is that exactly. all the ones? Exactly. Okay. You, you great. Can, yep. That's just the bat. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's an old bat. Okay. And it's sort of big. For a bat. bat. Yep. Okay. Okay, and they demand a spider. Yep. And a way out. Yep. And they promise to, uh, to join me you. Yep. down to the river Styx. Okay, cool. Hopefully yeah. they might have some idea where to go. That would be even better than protection. If they could guide me a bit, that would be great. We'll, well see. They, they can echolocate right in the dark. Right. So they can help a bit to know where. That to, can be quite handy. Like, so even if they don't know, they can help me even better than that in the shifting caves. Cool. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right then, Meshesh, we have a deal. But first. Just help, Shabtulish. Tell me which way to go to find you a spider. Okay. Um, the uh, you you see uh, you see all the bats kind of uh, gathering, starting to do some kind of uh, formation, going in circles, kind of synchronizing their flight, okay. and then um, you see that when there's an an opening that shifts, they kind of start plunging into it. It goes like downwards. I'm gonna have to use gravity to, uh, to... like not downward, but uh, like they the because they're they're flying like towards the ceiling and yep. they just plunge into that that the shaft. Down into, yeah. Okay, down yeah. to go into a, a lateral yeah. shaft. Okay, cool. Yeah. So all right, so I'll follow them then. I'll follow them um, as quickly as I can while still you know staying in character. <laughs> <I'll play laughs> <code. laughs> That's good. Okay, so you um. You you start to make your exit and the rumbling uh, of the ground and like it it's not over yet. You still uh, feel those vibration, but uh, the cave starts sta sta uh, stabilizing. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So the uh, things are are getting more stable. Okay. And you um, but now it's it's like there's no uh like any kind of lighting right now because uh. You uh you had some some like pokes and holes in the caves before, right? So some sunlight could get in, but now it's fully dark, and you're with the bats. They're guiding you by uh by emitting these sounds, right? So so you know you can follow them basically, and they warn you in advance of obstacles that you don't sit on the ground. Meshesh. Wait, Meshesh. Wait for me. The ground is uneven. I cannot see with my ears as you do. Though you could show me. Um, babe. Can I strike a secondary deal? <laughs> no, not exactly. No, okay, well, uh, okay. All right. And then Meshesh is like that kind of magical bat. It's just that no, it's, it's just a, a name bat. bat. Just like a regular talking bat. Okay, fine. Yeah. Well, not a talking bat. It's just it can talk to you in the language of names. Okay, it's me that's magical. Yeah. Right. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, I got you. Okay. That's just that's just the leader of a colony of bat, basically. Okay. Okay, great. Down but, we go. Um, so I just follow along then. I just follow along as well as I can. But although I do call out to, to Meshesh, like, slow down! My own legs! I can't see! And, um, okay. Good. So, yeah, you, you're, you're following down uh, the path. That, and uh, when you're about to maybe, I don't know, uh, just bump your knee on something or, or trip down, just as soon as you're about to kind of bump into an obstacle, there's always a bat just flying very close to you and, and just brushing the part of you that you need to move out, basically. Oh. They make you kind of uh, sh like just avoid uh, whatever they can make you avoid. And then 
and they become all silent. And you you can uh, you can hear just one bat flying, and you recognize it's Meshesh because it's kind of huge, right? It's a bit yeah. bigger than the others one, the other one, and it it comes on your shoulder, and it says, "This is the entrance to the lair of." We'll need a name now. Oh, a name, <laughs> a name for Shelob. All right, cool. Here we go. Draw from the well of names. Kinerook. Kinerook. Sure. Okay, I can sure. roll with that. So I gotta roll the R though. Kinerook. Kinerook. Oh, yeah. I'll try to remember it. Okay, good. So this is the uh, this is the entrance to the lair of Kinerook. Uh, she's the spider queen. Uh, we need to be wary and careful. We just need one of her babies. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> hey, what what could go wrong? You're in the dark wrong. cave. You just can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> the old school Dungeons and Dragons player in me is looking up my character sheet for where's my flint and tinder? Where are my torches? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have some on you. I'm good with well, that's, this. That's, that's, yeah, that mechanically, that's the next thing. Like, what, what control do I have over what I have? If I didn't describe myself in a certain way upon well, arrival, you, I you continue told me to... you went back to the camp, right? So you could have right. to catch some. Okay. It's cool. So I found behind a single torch and the flint to light it. Is that fair? Yeah. One torch. Yeah, that, cool. gives the, get, that gives us the dramatic tension for us to play with the fact that there's like one of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. So he lights... It's time to light my single torch. Okay. And he and starts to shine his light around to get the lay of the cave entrance to see what he can see so far. Okay, cool. Uh, just just like to give you a gist of what you can do, you could also strike a bargain with the fire on your torch. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, that's the kind of game we're running here. So yeah, I'm yeah, just, I, I'm just trying to, uh, to like to make so you like aware of the possibility. My instinct to want to try to strike a deal with the bat was well, it was a good instinct, even though th this is not the case for this bat. But the idea that everything is everything's on the table. Okay, okay, yep. Yep. it's great. All right. So he turns towards the torch and he says. Flame, flame. Yeah, well, we need a name for the flame now. <laughs> you got so much potential flame. <laughs> yeah, we need a name for this, for the flame inside the torch. I wanted to call it to like sort of like, you know, gift of Hephaestus or fucking, you know, whatever, something, uh, you know, <laughs> stolen gift of Prometheus. Uh, draw from the well of names. Tamka. Tamka. I like Tamka. it. I love it. Tamka the Tamka, flame. City of light. Give me vision. Give me warmth. I'm where no man should be. Tamka, you guided us from the caves to our grand civilization. I need your help once again in this cave. What do you want of me? Uh, what name do you give him? To Tamka, the... Yep. Shabtulish, the crone. I'm cool. Shabtulish, the crone! Oh, okay. Um... Shabtula, I've wandered deep beneath the earth. My eyes are dim. Give me vision. <laughs> give me warmth. My old bones. What do you want out of me, crone? Give me your gifts to see. Give me your gifts to burn. I'm surrounded by enemies. My okay. eyes are dim. I will. Yeah, OK. I will refrain to burn down this whole torch. If you promise that I will burn down um, yeah. 
Uh, I need a name now. <laughs> is it Loras? Okay. Hold no, on. no, 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 no. Uh, is, <laughs> is that name. the name right now? <laughs> Draw from the well of names. That's the name I wish it was. All right. Ziffertam. Okay. I need you to bring me to Ziffertam and help me burn it to the ground. It's a Zip city. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yep. I won't burn that whole torch because I got ambitions. Let me burn a city instead. Okay. So that's what I demand right now out of you. But yeah, otherwise you'll get light and, and, and heat for your whole journey. That's fine. It's good. So we need to roll now. I don't want to yeah, desire. I will offer you with your desire, but like I want to be able to see in the dark and throw fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... Yeah, okay. No, yeah, that's it. So, like, the torch will continue to be useful to me throughout my quest yeah. here. Right? That's that's what I want. Okay? And I'm offering him to to take to take this torch to Ziffertam and burn that down. Okay, great. Yep. So I'm going to roll some I'm going to roll yep. some bla some uh, some jet and some gold, but now I've got if I'm five. I've got five gold. Okay. All yep. right. So, roll two jet because we always have two jets and five gold because I'm adding from Febid the flying fish and Meshesh the bat. Two strikes on the jet, no strikes on the gold. Oh. Does something special happen in that case? No, 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 no. If uh, if you had none on your on your uh, immortal uh, on your jet dice and only on your dice of gold, they could make more demand out of you because you just see it by the power of the the name ones but now the mortal dice suggest it kind of symbolizes that you succeeded with your own uh abilities basically on your own merit so yeah they agree to do as you ask in exchange you make no further demand and the their agreement endures so you pick two out of the three well in jurors we would be talking about like after my quest and after like the burning down the city yeah sure that's what that that endures is uh, like if I leave endures on the table, I can still conceivably like have this torch that's working and then I just have to bring it and burn down the city. But then like I've got no more further deal with the Lord of Light or whatever. Yeah. OK, if you, if, if you don't pick endure like it's a one shot deal, it's a one shot deal. It seems like a long shot deal. Like it's a <laughs> it seems like it's going to take me a while. It's the thing I've got to do now. That's what we're going to do. So the deal is on. They agree to do what I ask in exchange. So while I'm down here in the cave, the torch will not fail me, but then I've got to go and by whatever means, I don't know if it's like literally with this torch or if it's just by whatever means I got to burn that city down. <laughs> like, oh, it's, it's the fire of that torch. The it's fire of this torch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You won't ever go like, like you won't, you won't extinguish itself until you bring it there. Oh, that's a great deal. <laughs> oh yeah, can, that's the I whole point. See, I can see the loop. I can see the loophole <laughs> this big in that deal. I like it. Oh yeah. no, 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 wait, wait. <laughs> There's a catch. So yeah. that's when you roll dice. Your name one can make demands out of you. So if you delay it, they can they can ask you for more quests and and okay. they can harm you if you if you don't do them. So yeah, okay. yeah. things could yeah, go bad. Okay, great. So <laughs> so that's what we'll do then. They agree that they're gonna. That this torch is not gonna let me down, but I'm gonna have to burn the city down. Great. Yeah. yeah. Do I put it and on my sheet? Or uh, no, no, because no. because okay. uh, the agreement doesn't endure, right? Okay. So it's not like I temporarily get the benefits and then it disappears after. No. The benefit that I get is the thing I've asked for. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So okay, that's fine. So I move along with this with this torch. I move along with this torch and I start to make my way with the torch out in front of me with one hand and maintaining the, you know, my little walking stick and my posture, keeping up the, the crone appearance as I make my way in. You see, you start to see some webbing, plenty of spider webbing all around the place. And uh, you see uh, what seems to be uh, the, um, like what remains of eggs spider eggs but open ones right mm. and then uh when you go just a little further you you see just a, a whole like i don't know thousands of these 
white kind of transparent like baby spiders but but like even though they're babies they're like big as my fist but uh but they're just baby spiders and they're all crawling all over the place and when you when you kind of look around with a torch it's just it's it's filled of it okay um and it's one of these baby spiders that i want well you want one of the uh grown ones right okay like a uh, bigger than that yeah okay because you you need you need something that will help feed uh part of the bats colony so they, they want one of these uh i stay outside of the cave a little bit okay i look down to one of the little babies and I say, Child of the Furtam, come to Shabtulish. <laughs> you say it in the language of name, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think I speak any other language. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. So, it's a little spider, uh, the whitey, shiny thing. It's a, That one is a bit... Um, like it's a bit uh like it's got a shorter leg no it's got two shorter legs on one side so when it walks it kind of has this thing for it right because it's like it's it's not exactly uh well something happened right <laughs> you're making it cute like tiny tim in yep. the christmas carol right like you're making me care about this little thing <laughs> <laughs> yes okay <laughs> all right um so yeah, so so it's all cute and it, it listens to you, right? Because you spoke you you spoken the language of names, it needs to respond to you. And I yeah, guess. it has a name. Oh, um, so yeah, it's, it's got a name. Of course, it's, it's got, got a name. name. Sure, <laughs> it's got to have one. And when it's got a name, it's got a will and desire. I feel like Shulbar. I feel oh, sure like good. I feel like the Grinch when he's in the house and he's talking like to the little who, like little Sin <laughs> Lou who, who's no more than two, pretending to be the Santa Claus. <laughs> child of what was his name? Child, child of Zifortam, come to Shabtulish. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the little uh, Shulbar it it crawls all the way. It looks at you. What is your name, little one? Shulbar, mistress. Shulbar. Shulbar. You. Do your big brothers and sisters look after you? Are they going to help you to get big and strong on those little legs? <laughs> you see it, look at it, legs, and, uh, and say, No, I shall be eaten. Eaten oh. by... By Ziffertan. Oh. And what, she, what she, you... she shows you the uh, the missing parts of her two, uh, her two legs. Oh. oh, little one. Perhaps that is your way. But can't you imagine wider dreams? To see the marvels of the world with your eight eyes? To walk your six remaining legs upon the Earth's surface? <laughs> that fish can take you. <laughs> oh, what do you ask in return, Crone? Bring me one of your big brothers, one who may threaten to eat you, and we'll teach him a lesson for his insolence, for his bullying, for his intimidation. <laughs> That's good. Oh, sure, roll your dice, man. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I think I was born to be a witch, man. This is great. Uh, okay, so we're still rolling. Yep. Two jets, five gold. Um, yeah. gold. Okay, one Gosh. on your mother dies, three on strikes on your, mo your mother dies. Gold, choose two consequences. As an Indian sees two destinies, and you are vulnerable to your name ones now. They demand a labor of you. Oh, oh. Okay, so let's do this one thing at a time. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. I'm doing a lot of offering what they desire. I'll try to keep in mind that I've got some other some other yeah. things that I can move towards here. Of course, um, to even escape, yep. All right, great. So, hmm, two of my consequences. Uh, 
OK, they agree to do as I ask in exchange and curse you and my heartstrings. The agreement endures. <laughs> what else does this little spider want from me? <laughs> Oh, good. I want to. Uh, I want to eat the uh, the flesh of one of these famous um, land birds. <laughs> That's a callback to episode one. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, I've never seen one, but I promise you, we'll keep looking, and when we find one, you'll eat it. <laughs> good okay so um so yeah yeah okay good uh scroll up <laughs> uh it's shulba this the this tiny sp little spider right shulba is not old not big not known to all not mighty but beautiful yeah it's beautiful it's, at least to me <laughs> yeah it is, in its own way it is it totally is right it's white it's pure yeah it's, it's full of hope, right? It's got eight big old baby eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, uh, yeah, so they demand to, uh, well, protection from, from, their, from, from their big brothers and sisters. That's what you offered first. Yeah, protection, get out, yeah. see the world, eat, <laughs> eat a land bird. Yep. <laughs> That's and a they promise. List. And they promise to lure out yeah. a big spider for the bats. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, so, go, Shulbar. Go quickly. Shush, shush, shush. So Shulbar goes, and uh, yes, it is followed by one of the bigger brother. It's about a, as big as, um, it's between a big, a big dog and a horse. Oh my god! That that kind of size <laughs> of a spider, and it's yeah. pursuing him. But now you kind of seem uh, tastier than that puny little spider, right? Yeah, I believe it. And as soon as I <laughs> as soon as I see it, I'm like, this is not as good an idea as I thought it was. <laughs> so, I uh, I turn to. I turn to Meshbesh and I say, Meshbesh, now! And I start to hobble my way back up the hill. <laughs> like back, okay. up, back up the way we came. And I'm like, strike now! It's your time! Okay, so you're trying to escape? Good. I'm so, trying to escape. I'm letting yeah. the bats try yeah. to get their fill, you know? Good. So let's roll it. So now... I've got. Oh yeah, little... you're supposed to. to uh, you've got two destinies, and I'm. I'm so there's what you're supposed to make it. So two destinies. That's these boxes here. Check, check. And the named ones. I'm vulnerable. Okay, so you're still on your way to the uh, to the underwater. So that's good. Uh, you, you you're accomplishing what Febid wants. You're uh, you're bringing a spider to mesh so. That's cool. And Shubar, well, Shubar, Shubar won't make it in a minute. Okay, okay. So none, none of your name ones will make it in a minute right now because you're all, you're, you're following exactly what they want. So they, they, okay. they don't, they don't ask anything of you, and you, you get those to destiny. Good, good, cool. So yeah, so roll your, your escape here. Yeah. yeah so, we, we almost forgot the, the other stuff from your. Yeah, that's true. There was a lot on this one. Okay, so yeah. roll, uh, two jet, six gold. Yeah. One strike, three strikes. So I've succeeded, shows two consequences, and as a name dealer sees two destinies, and I'm vulnerable to my named ones now. They make a demand of me for labor. Okay. Poop, poop. Okay, and now escapes is you get away. You, your escape goes on unwitnessed and sees one destiny. How good are destinies? <laughs> well, uh, okay. There's two things you can do with them. Uh, you can describe how you uh, you can ask me how you've prepared to do something, and for anything that I add as a fact, like uh, you know you're in me's position and stuff like that, you need to spend a destiny, but you get to add a, a dice of jet. What you can also do with destiny is after you roll, you can decide that well, I it's a crappy result. 
I'll risk all my destiny as dice the jet. I'll add the result to my to my initial roll. And in that case, if I remember correctly, you even get to uh, to take a third consequence or something like this. And all the the dice the jet that showed a success, the strike, you you uh, you gain them back in your destiny pool, basically. So it's good. It's actually good. You can you can boost a, a bad roll, or you can uh, you can ask how you've prepared uh, before you do something. You can describe how you sorry how you prepare yourself, and for each fact that gives you kind of an advantage, you lose one destiny but you gain a mortal life to jet. Okay. Yep. And so again, a named one is going to ask a labor of me. I wonder if I wonder if I were to choose just for the sake of fun, if I choose. Um, my escape goes unwitnessed. Oh, no, I can't choose, choose that if I don't say I get away. Like, I'd have to say I get away for my, for my no. escape to be unwitnessed. Okay, well, in that case, forget what I said about that. Well, destiny. no, you, you, could, you could not get away, but nobody noticed that you tried to run away. <laughs> 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 I've got to save face in front of these bats, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So um, I don't get away, uh, but like the bats don't notice that I was like, you know, buggering off. I will seize one destiny and maybe the bats make a demand of me or something. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, and help us. What's happening here or something? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Now they want you to, uh, to, uh, they want you to knock down that spider. Well, that's it. They said meat. They didn't say make them fight a spider. They could have fought a yep. spider on their own. Right, perfect. Uh, no, no, no. Now, 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 now you need to knock down that spider or they're going to harm you. You're going yep. to lose when you're immortalized yet. Yeah. All right. Great. So, yep, the spider is, is totally catching up to you, right? It's big uh, between a horse and, and a dog and uh, definitely going to, uh, to eat your face. Okay, great. Am I able to do anything except make a deal with this thing? I uh, can coerce it. Yeah, but like, I mean, I'm gonna. It's gonna be a lie, right? Like, it's clearly. Like, I'm gonna be like, hey, <laughs> get down and let these bats eat you. Or I'm gonna beat you up. <laughs> if it refuses, I'm gonna beat him up anyway. <laughs> or even if it well, says yes. Um, uh, yeah. Well. The, okay. You, okay. Okay. You I've can the minute surrender, right? I've got coerce. I've got coerce. I've got coerce. And I, so, okay, I've got coerce, and I say, you eight-legged one, I become bigger all of a sudden, I stand up straight, but I'm still the crone, okay? Okay. Say, you eight-legged one, do not dare to put your mandibles upon Shabtulish, or I shall burn your entire colony asunder, including your precious Zifortam. Lay yourself down and submit to our will, or see your entire colony wiped clean from this earth. Wow, okay. That, that's a heavy threat now. Okay, good. So let's roll it. Yee. All right. <laughs> so I'm still rolling with uh, three, four, five, six. Uh, okay, two and six. So two. Roll. Oh, wait. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can uh, figure out how you could have, like, prepared yourself a bit to face yeah. that spider mm. yeah that's that, that that's that's kind of the mechanic that would work for like i was looking for a torch before right like i like what you know i need something that we haven't really talked about uh wait you have specifically equipped yourself or on yourself as a, well fire against the spider would be good uh you've learned your opponent's hidden position well that wouldn't be that good man Yep. So if you spend destiny after you act, you get to pick all three consequences if you wish. So yeah, I've got lots of destiny. Maybe I'll even think of how I could be prepared for this. Like what other cool? Like maybe it's time for me to reveal some kind of like power or some kind of like cool equipment. Do I have a well? I, I've I've, uh, I've looked at the facts, the list of yeah. facts you can pick from from prepared, and it doesn't really kind of fit because you're already kind of in the, in the confrontation itself. Okay, so yeah, yeah. 
All right, so let's just roll two jet. Yep. Roll two jet, six gold, and we'll spend destinies after if we yep. need. No strikes on the jet, one strike on the immortal dice of gold. I've succeeded. Choose one consequence. I'm vulnerable to my name de dealer, uh, my uh, named one now. Let me de demand a. Do I suffer harm? Um, no, not yet. Oh, okay. you're, you're trying to accomplish your, your goal here, so that's cool. Uh, remove all your destiny now if you want to roll them. It's the five of them, basically. The, the I've got to get rid of all five. Yeah. Okay. Boom, boom. What's the difference between having one and five, let's say? Uh, well, now you roll five jet. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we get to add them to what you had first. Okay. So, uh, so that gives you three strikes. So, well, now it's three consequences because you spent destiny and you regain two of them because of the two strikes you got here. Oh, yep. Splendid. So now you can take all three consequences of the course, right? So they do as you demand or else you may harm them. Uh, you are not harmed in the exchange and no other is harmed. Great. Yeah. So uh, that's good. So I hold it at bay and I sort of get it to back off under threat of my of my of my torch and in doing so distract them and let the bats do their work. Well, uh, yeah, it, it's afraid of the fire and it kind of uh, falls into a like uh, a small ball and the bats just uh, just like they, they look at this and say, OK, now sort of shot at this. So they launch into it and just like bite it and suck the blood out of it and it's just it's it's a gory scene uh spider has too many bats at once to actually fight back or do anything all right but but yeah but it's making a lot of noise okay well shabtulish 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 says uh shabtulish says ziffertam will thank you with her many children for your sacrifice your quiet sacrifice <laughs> like that, Shulba? You like that? How do you like that? You bullied my little spider. How do you like it? It's your turn. <laughs> so yeah, it's making a whole, a whole ruckus, and uh, you um, you can feel in the air that something is shifting and moving. Like uh, you don't know how many spiders there there's down there actually. And you haven't met, uh, what was her name? Zimurta, is that it? Zifurtam. Zifurtam, yeah. Yep, so. All and, right. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take out just my trusty dagger, <laughs> trusty knife out of my belt, and walk up and plunge it through, through the spider's head. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna like try to finish it so it stops making noise, and I say, "Oh, it's the bats! Much. It's the bats that are making noise, right? Flying around ah, outside. Okay. Yeah, man. I thought it was the ruckus from the thing. Okay, well, it was like, the ruckus of the eating sessions. So, yeah, I should have been clear. Right, so I, so I, okay, so I, I I shoo them off and I say, "Mesh, mesh, wait, wait," and I I I just finish the suffering of the big spider, and I pick it up, and I say. Come, we must leave this place. But the bounty is yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they uh, they stop scoop eating for a while. I should scoop up Shulbar, put her on my shoulder. <laughs> so yeah, they stop eating for a while, but but you 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 can uh, you can sense the bats uh, like pursuing you because you got their lunch basically, and they really wanted. So yeah, you make your way. Uh, Towards um, towards the the uh, towards the underground and underworld, and and you feel like the air is getting hotter, and it it smells of sulfur and other kind of noxious things. Uh, it, it makes your head probably a bit dizzy, right? Like, okay. yeah. So I, I I stop to catch my breath. You know, um, you know, Marinier throws throws the corpse of the of the big spider down and says, "Mesh, mesh, take your bounty." Yeah. So all the bats they they, they yeah. resume their feast on the on the spider at once. I open my wine skin and I drink it up a little bit, put it away, and sort of 
I start to look around and I uh, I kind of like look. Is there are there like are there like visible uh, like visible vapors and stuff coming out of pits or? Yeah, yeah. You see like small stone chimneys, right? Okay. With, with like once in a while, like a burst of uh, of vapor and gas, and uh, and then it smells awful when it happens. I turn to Shulbar on my shoulder and I say, stay close, little one, if you want to live. <laughs> so you uh, you can feel the, the heat as well. Like uh, and um and suddenly there's a there's an orange glow as you move towards the, the other tunnels. You can see an orange glow, like faint one, like it's not so well lighted, but uh, but it's not as dark as it used to be, right? And you um, you can hear some kind of growling at the end of it, and it smells like wet dog fur. Oh, great! Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. All right. So Marinier stands up, uh, takes off the blanket, throws it oh. down on the ground, throws away the throws away the stick, pulls out his dagger, and says, "Folks, Shabtalish has a confession to make. <laughs> he's not a crone. <laughs> Shabtalish needs to pay attention to what he's doing. Game face." <laughs> <laughs> Shabtalish is deft. He's so sly. He's a pirate. <laughs> nope, by looking at the old woman, but he's a suave, suave dog. All right, <laughs> Shabtalish is ready to go. So yeah, it smells like a dog. Okay. And, um, and you can see um, uh, a, a shape all draped in in black uh, fabrics, and it's got a, there's a boat right beside it, and it's got a sight mm -hmm. in, in, in its hands. Yeah, and it's yeah, petting yeah. the big, huge, tree headed dog. Tree headed dog, right? <laughs> as soon as you said big wet dog, I was like, oh damn, we're mm -hmm. there. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're there. What are we gonna use to pay the boatman? Let's. Um... Oh, well, that's going to be a chance to spend some destiny and find out how we've prepared for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what to give him. Yeah. Let's find out what he wants. What's the mm. name of the boatman? Boatman's got a name. It's escaped me right now. Like, obviously, he's got a name, and it is... Was well, it I mean, we'll draw a well of names. I don't like... <laughs> I meant, like, you know. Okay, so I move along. Took, 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 took. Yeah, let me look at this. Uh, how you prepared... Yeah. So yeah, the, already I'm going to start to think. How am I prepared to, you know, to negotiate with the boatman? I know I'm going to need to pay. Yeah, because it's your mission, right? Fevid gave you that mission at first. Going to the river <laughs> sticks. I know the boatman's yeah. going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I've got, um, you know, I've got two gold coins to cover my eyes or whatever. Yeah. So you, you um, okay. So before rolling, ask one who knows the will me, how you have prepared. So I tell you how you. Oh, prepare. you tell me. Okay, right. And for each one, it is true. Uh, you cross off one of your destiny, and you turn it into the mortal dice jet that you add to your roll. So, uh, yeah, you've specifically equipped yourself. So you've got the two coins that you need to pay the ferryman. Okay. Um, you've taken the high ground in some way because um, you you uh, you're you're arriving from a weird direction. Like you're not supposed to be able to. Go down there. Uh, you've got guided show. by bat. Yeah. Yeah. Does it show up uh, not dead? <laughs> yeah. Like right. that's not supposed to happen. So, so that kind of gives you the high ground. Um, you have uh, how many destiny you've got already? Two. 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 Yep. Um, yep. You've equipped yourself and you've taken. I uh, know. You've equipped yourself and you've learned. The uh, no, 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 what would be best is this? Yeah, yeah. you've equipped yourself, and your opponent doesn't know your position. Yeah, 
So okay. you still you still got the drop the drop on them. Okay. They so haven't I'm... smelled you in the air, right? Because of the bats, probably. And um, and yeah, you you've got the coins to pay the uh, to pay Karen, basically. Well, we'll give it a name, actually. That's it. Well, yeah, that's the name yeah. I was looking for. Right. Yeah. So roll. Or no, it's not roll. Let's uh, draw from the well of names and find out what his name is here. <sighs> okay, let's do it again. Yeah. Draw from the well of names. Oh, Neckabell. That's perfect. Yeah. That's like Necrobell from Yorkborg. That's like perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. Mechabel is, uh, is the um, the passer, right? The one he, that you, um, the ferryman, basically that brings yeah. you to the yeah, yeah, a lot of the dead. Good, and uh, let's throw in a will of name for the dog. Unku. Oh, it's perfect for a dog. Unku. Yeah. Unku. Yeah. Nekabel. Unku. All right, so I um, so I turn, I turn to Meshesh and Shulbar, and I say, and the other thing, the other thing you need to know about Shabtulish, the deft pirate of the seven seas, is that he died yesterday. And I go down and I grab some like ash and soot from the ground yeah sure okay. and i put it underneath my eyes and then i wink at them that he died yesterday <laughs> okay <laughs> and i take the two coins and i lick them okay and place them over my closed eyes and say mesh mesh guide me to the boatman and what about like, the torch? <laughs> the ever burning shit. torch. Shit. <laughs> uh, okay, he's swinging it and he's saying, Back, you scurvy dogs. Back. Back, okay. you scurvy dogs. Shabdulish will never go down except fighting. You scurvy dogs. <laughs> So I pretend I'm stuck in like the death dream of the moment I died and that, that okay. I hate it. You know that I'm still fighting with the ever burning flame. You know, still fighting off my assailants. You um, you you, uh, you feel that Unku is disturbed, right? At your sight, uh, it started growling a bit, and the uh, you don't see the face of Nikabel, right? You just see the hood. My eyes are closed with like the coins oh, yeah. of my eyes, you know. But still, Nikabel shifts its its head right in the hole of, in the uh, in the cloak and the hood but you don't see a face right it's just it's just dark uh and it just it it waits basically figure out what's going on <sighs> okay and so like i go up until like the bats let me know that i'm yeah. close or whatever that i get a sense that i'm that i'm there i yeah. say Captain, Captain, did I fight well? Okay. Um, wow. Um, what I want is for it to take me as a dead person down the river Styx to accept the payment off of my eyes and guide me as any other dead person. I'm just an unusual dead person. Oh, okay, good. Uh, so I, that's, that's what I'm trying yeah. to communicate without saying it. Okay. Okay, but do you, do you start bar trying to bargain with Nikabel? Because you well, could yeah, offer it. Actually, essentially, by 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 play acting, I'm trying to you know between the lines offer them what they desire. Is my cool. my, two, my two my two coins here for passage on the boat? Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you want to to be able to go to the underworld, right? To the waters of the underworld. Yeah world and for him to pay no mind to me more than he would to any other dead person that gives the gold and just like <laughs> just, just let me on that boat let's go oh it's good um 
the cabal uh, like it answers in a in a whisper, right? Because it's it it's not loud. It just whispers so stuff, right? You're only dead when you, when you get there. So everything I think it's quiet, right? Mm. So it goes like, I am tired, mortal. Even though I can smell flesh on you, it is okay. Just find someone to take my place as a carrier of the souls of the dead. Oh my god. I shall lay you there. Like I want to retire. Like now or when we get back? <laughs> In the underworld, you will find a soul. Oh, okay. All right. To come and take over the place. Place. Yep. Okay. So I perk up. I take the gold coins off my uh, off my eyes and I say, Well, that's a deal. And you could take this as a gratuity then. <laughs> okay. So yeah, roll it. You've got you you prepared yourself, right? So you could study a bit the situation. So you've got uh you cross out these two destiny, you've got four dice a jet. Okay. And you got all your dice of gold. Three strikes on the jet, one on the gold, two consequences, two destinies. That's nice. Good. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's see. Let's see what you do. Do you want to? Uh, uh, my dear, you know that this is going to get more interesting. You know, <laughs> like I, I need to get down there. So they agree to do as I ask in exchange. Yeah. But I like the fact that you know, like you're going into retirement, buddy. I mean, this is a dead end gig, but your life's not over. Let's have this endure, this agreement endure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, good. So, so what else up. do you need? Why don't you follow me on my adventures, bro? <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It okay. I'll get uh, you out of this. You know what? You've been stuck doing this way too long. Way too long. You yeah. know? I, do you get it? Do you even get weekends? You should be on a pension by now. Come with me. Come see the sun. Here's what it asks as it's for the demand then. Right. Okay. Ask. Um, yeah. Oh. I want you to bring me the woman of the god of the earth. You know the 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 whole bunch of uh, of women that your fated hero risk rescued. Oh my were, gosh, yes, yeah. yes. All those women who followed Namumnu in the end. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. You want them? I mean, we could find them. We're looking for a we're looking for a land bird anyway for this spider. I mean, like I've never seen that before, and I, you know, I've never heard of these women before. But we can find them. The world's not not that big once we get back up to the surface. <laughs> it's good. Yep. So uh, so yeah, it wants you to find a replacement soul and uh, to bring it to the harem of Namumnu, right? Okay. The one that, that was distant to Man Moon knew, but that escaped. That escaped. Oh, because of that wretched other faded hero. Yep. It's too bad I forgot his name. Yeah, me too. I will we'll, we'll look it up. We'll find we'll it back. It. Those of you who are watching now episode two, but saw episode one, you know what the answer is. <laughs> yep. Just for us, it's been two months or something. So, we have... okay. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's scroll up and let's describe uh, Nicabel. Nicabel, oh my god, make a deal with death, Nicabel. Almost death, right? It's the passer of the soul. Right. Well, he's old. Yeah, he's old. Known, he's to, known all. to all. And is he mighty? Oh, I definitely. Know. You cannot escape it. Yeah, old, known to all. Is he mighty or no? no. Yeah, he's mighty. Mighty? What yep. what is inscribed? This is the first well, time I wanted to know the what thing. inscribed is. It, yeah. it it shows you it shows you a tablet of clay, and it it inscribes down its name and it asks that you sign that deal that contract with it. Like, oh, let it set it in in stone. This is the first time that I get the that I that I got the impression that maybe that's a fun idea. All right, Neckabel, come here. 
Let me tell you something about old Shabtulish. <laughs> I'm a man of the sea, brother. I'm a man of the sea and the sky. I ride the fish all day, bro. My name is Marinier. And it's good to meet you. <laughs> and you signed up Marinier? Yeah. Ding. Good. Yep. So you, you like you can you can this either the name what it is you have something inscribed on it or you make the deal inscribed. Meaning that now the only the the only way to break that deal with Nicabel uh, Nicabel is to actually break that tablet of of clay. But that could still go wrong, right? But you've got you you struck a deal that will like as long as you provide what they ask, they will provide you a. Uh, your your uh, their dice of gold and like that is that is good right four dice of gold that is amazing. Tell you what, I take I take the gold coins back from his hand, and I inscribe his name on one and my name on the other, and I give him back the one with my name and I take the one with his name written on it. Oh, you got BFF, Julia. Your BFF with <laughs> BFF with the with the ferryman, baby. Yeah. He's seen some things, you know. He's got stories to tell. He's bored about it, but you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna weekend at Bernie's him. I'm gonna take him out. Uh, so yeah. So they demand, uh, they demand that you uh, bring them a replacement and uh, bring them to the harem of Nemumnu. Nemumnu, yeah. Uh, and they promise. What did you ask of? Oh yeah, yeah. They promise to uh, bring you to the other world. Yeah. Oh yeah, these are both his demands. Yeah. yeah. So I'll get that out of there and put it up here. And this is guide me to the underworld. Yes. Like I'd keep going forever, but like for the purposes of the uh, young people watching this video, that feels like the end of episode one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You 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 embark on the boat of yeah. uh, of of Nick Abel and you you yeah. start making your way in the sticks towards the the underworld waters. Yeah, yeah, man. That is just mm. awesome. And like the rest of the journey is easy, and then we'll see yeah. what happens. It's something like climax that actually starts the next episode. Cool. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I'll start re recording now. Yeah.